Hi there, it's Sandra with Brew City Thrifts. Today I am here at the Goodwill in Janesville, Wisconsin. Never been here before, and so I'm excited to go in and see what they've got going on in Janesville. Let's hit it. I don't always show the outside of the stores that I frequent, but since this is the first time I've been here and I don't come this way very much, I thought I'd give you a shot of what it looks like from outside. One of the first shelves I come up to is sort of kitchen service items and this looks to be a vintage crock with a Dutch boy and girl on one side. It is quite heavy. I could hardly lift it up to see it on the bottom, but off camera I did see it was made in the USA. There's a happy little reindeer cookie jar and a soup tureen. That could have possibly been vintage. It's, those things are so large I don't frequently look at them just difficult to mail. I saw this tiki cup but it was plastic. I always see these ceramic containers with the cork toppers that have the little sayings and that one said beer money and they some of them are really fun but I usually leave them behind. Another little jar that one was a little bit more lightweight. This is a pretty color blue that glass but I believe it was reverse painted and not really it was a little bit beat up up on this shelf I noticed the glass bowl here well first I had to pull out that cast iron trivet but it was a pretty I thought maybe it was um, carnival glass but it's just an iridescent color it's a basket weave pattern nice pieces um, just not not I wasn't in love with them this teapot I thought was it had a little bit of wear on the bottom it was hand painted it kind of made me think 1970s ish and it was cute but uh, again, not enough to tempt me today. So being a little bit on the picky side, I think. And I saw this little bear figurine and I immediately thought Artisania Rinconada, which it turns out to be. However, there are some pretty sizable chips right on the face and I decided to chippy. Here among the china sets, I am noticing some familiar patterns mostly, but I also see some patterns that are unfamiliar to me. That looks like Johnson Brothers there, for example. And down here you can see the Corel Ivy um, pattern enamelware. I see that around a lot as well. And I noticed these green glass plates, they're square. I liked them, but they were so worn, I decided, nope, just too damaged for resale. I saw this set of, and I'm not sure what they are. They are very blingy with some rhinestones, and I, it's got a snowflake pattern. Looking at the back, I it looked like a single tube for... I don't know how it was put together. I was going to guess napkin rings of some kind. $25 originally made in India. They look like they were made in India. And I do like blingy objects like this. They do sometimes go well for me. In this case, I decided to leave them there. I didn't know what they were. So I grabbed this plate from back on this shelf and I was immediately like whoa we've got carnival glass and not only do we have carnival glass it was heavy it was substantial and so when I turned it over and saw that it was Fenton I was not surprised but the price tag $20 was a bit surprising <laughs> $20 for this lovely Fenton glass plate carnival glass plate commemorating glass makers which was a great subject so it's a beautiful plate I just decided for $20 I was going to leave it 
on the shelf for some other carnival glass collector. I noticed this and I'm not sure what it was to be honest. It was rather lightweight though. It was not the best quality so I took a real brief look at that. Um, some candles. That is a candle holder, terracotta candle holder. This tray looked like it might be one of those mid-century tin trays that have really nice graf graphics, but I did not recognize the maker on it. And these candle holders, it's a pair, rather ornate, kind of cool looking. I liked them and I can sometimes move these, but the price of seven dollars each meant that I probably wouldn't make too much of a profit so I decided to leave them on the shelf. I meant to mention earlier that at this store I was I didn't have any connection to Wi-Fi so I wasn't able to look anything up including this Heather Goldmink uh, piece of pottery this pottery figurine it's supposed to be a figure honoring the month of September. It's called Harmony. And um, some of her pieces go really well. In this case, I decided to leave it on the shelf. I'm at the blue end cap shelves and I noticed this drip glaze pottery on the top shelf. It looks like it could be mid-century. There was no signature though, so I moved on. Was scanning and my eye was caught by these cute kitties on this resin frame. It was a nice frame and those kitties were super sweet. Um, I wish it had had some sort of signature. Then I noticed this little handmade drip glaze. It's like a, a little vase with a, an attached flower frog in the middle. Uh, I think these are really cool. I, I like the shape on this one. I do like the glaze. And I think that is something I could take with me. So I popped that in my cart. Here among the tchotchkes, there was this Sorrento music box. It's Italian and often it has a lid with inlay. I was going to try to see if the music worked, but the the winding um, device was just absolutely frozen. So it wasn't that amazing, so I moved on. This figurine, I thought this looked very much like the Heather Goldmink one. I thought maybe it was a matching one. It was not uh, apparently Heather Goldmink. It could have been Blue Sky. I noticed this little hand. Oops, I guess I noticed this little set of doll furniture, kind of like rattan doll furniture. But then I had really been reaching for this little turtle, handmade, hand carved, um, and signed 1974. I thought it was super sweet. Maybe it wasn't a turtle. Maybe it's actually a worm and an apple, to be honest, now that I look at it. But I did think it was missing some piece on the top. So I decided it was uh, I would leave it I noticed this conch shell um, and it is uh, very big and beautiful and uh, sometimes those are good pickups and then I noticed this set of bookends it was a resin set super heavy it looked like it had some age only $4.99 for the set and I thought it was just a nice looking set I think the books look like real antique books and it has some age. You can tell from the bottom with the felt and the label there. So I pop those in my cart to think about those. I kind of like those. Still among the tchotchkes, I noticed this wooden hand carved bird. 
I liked it, but it was a, um, it had the name of a country written on it, which means it was a tourist um, item and I decided I would leave it. This parrot was also super cool for $4.99. It is hand carved, hand painted. It was a little bit rough. I mean, if it just had a little bit more finesse, I think I would definitely have picked it up. This piece of ceramic pottery on the bottom, it uh, looks to be some sort of bakeware. I liked it. It's super heavy. So I decided since it wasn't signed, I would leave it as well. Okay, you know that row pottery is something that I pick up a lot. It is a salt glazed pottery made here in Wisconsin. It is vintage, typically, um, the pieces that I find. And this is a huge row pottery crock, circa 1999, but $15. Still, these can go for $40, $50 at this size. It's like a half gallon or a gallon. So I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to probably give it to my friend. And it was a good pickup. And then I noticed this fun thing. It is a Halloween ghost sculpture made out of wood. It's got little lights on it. It's got little spiders hanging out from it. Metal spiders, a metal pumpkin. Only $10. I thought this was adorable and normally this is something I would have snapped up on this particular trip. I was overwhelmed with how big it was and it was just not quite fine enough. It was a little bit wobbly. The, uh, the way it was put together was it would have needed some reinforcement and so I decided not to bring it, even though it was a super piece. Somebody's going to be super excited to have that and put it in their front yard come Halloween. Okay, it is time for a cart review, and it's going to go fast because I only have four items. Here is that row pottery crock made in 1999. No chips, no damage. It's a little bit dirty, but that's going to wash up really nice, and that's going to make a great gift to my friend who collects row pottery. These books, and I really like them. I know that they are resin and I know that they are a pretty nice set. I was, as I was looking at them right here, I saw some chips. There was a chip there at the bottom, possibly forgivable. You could probably put some paint on it, but then I turned it over and on the other side was another re relatively noticeable chip. And I decided that I was not going to take them with that damage. This little vase with the drip glaze and the attached ceramic flower frog, that's coming with me. And this candle, It's a Wonderful Life. I have a friend who's a big It's a Wonderful Life fan. And even though this is candle is not anything special, I thought it would be fun to give that to her. So that's what I'm taking. So it's always nice to try out a new Goodwill and I am happy to have taken a look at the Janesville Goodwill. I noticed that someone who's pricing the items in there does know what's vintage and collectible and priced accordingly. I never would have picked up that row pottery piece at that price if I wasn't giving it for a gift. It was just too high for resale, but because I have someone in mind to gift it to, I'm willing to pay up a little bit. Didn't uh, have too much luck today, but it is a Saturday and I want to say, oh my gosh, too crowded for me. I was feeling super claustrophobic. I was feeling super obvious and like, I don't like to video in a way where people are going to notice it. So I just felt really kind of uncomfortable. I hope it didn't show too much in, in my, in my video, but none, nonetheless, always fun to go out thrifting. Hope you had fun too. Like my channel subscribe and comment and come back again because we will do this again siblings thrift on